how do you get to work together with private partners when you want to research something, you want to make uh, innovation, you want to make research, you want to do something as a scientist, but you need the cooperation of, uh, of a company. You need them to invest and work with you. How do you find your way? How do you get to talk to the people? You can't just, well, you can, you can basically get the, the phone book or the internet version of that, and you can call up any big company, you get to the reception and you say, I'm a researcher, and, and it would be a nice test how long it would take for them to hang up the phone. I think I'll give you about seven minutes before that happens. So there must be a different way, but it's, it's hard to find. I, I would like to ask you um, to introduce yourself shortly and just tell me, uh, how, how did you get here? I mean, probably by bus, but how did you get to be here? And, and what's your connection to the, the project? Kees Linse, please. Um, I'm Kees Linse. I'm uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in the board of uh, STW, the Technology Foundation of NWO. Um, and I worked my life for, for Shell. And uh, and I came here because my wife delivered me here by car. By car, yes. Okay. <laughs> Richie van der Miras, uh, please. I came by car, boat, and train. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I got up very early this morning, but that's uh, not so, such an interesting information, I think. My. Uh, but you I'm have various connections to the to the to the program. Yes, um, I'm a member of uh, the board of Botro. And I'm in the program committee uh, from the perspective of Votro and uh, to bring in, uh, well, the idea that the, um, well, to fight cultural imperialism, let's call it that way, to, to, to make sure that new technology doesn't have only a Western face, but also fits in other countries. And, uh, well, it's about, about a lot we heard this uh, this afternoon, so that's my uh, That was the specific. great question that was just asked about, about innovation in other countries, who who gets to design the new yeah. product. And, and I'm a member of the uh, uh, TKI, Top Consortium of Knowledge and Innovation of, for the Bio-Based Economy. So there is a dual f uh, link uh, to the top sectors and the uh, top sectors NVO um, interaction. Okay, Kees, please. Yeah. Uh, my name is Kees van Beers. I'm a professor of innovation management at Delft University of Technology and also one of the uh, co-leaders of an LDE center on a research center on frugal innovations in uh, Africa. I'm doing that with people from Leiden and Rotterdam, for instance, Professor Peter Knorke is also here. And we recently got a research project funded on uh, frugal innovations and responsible entrepreneurship in Africa that was funded by NWO and uh, three partners from the private sector, uh, Philips uh, in the health sector, and Oasen and Hartenboer, two Dutch firms in the water sector. Can you first explain to me what the project is about? What, what are you doing there? Uh, the idea of the project is uh, to investigate how, um, uh, with the help of several cases, how um, uh, frugal innovations, which are innovations that are particularly developed for people in the, in the low-income groups, mainly in developing countries, how frugal innovation, under what conditions can frugal be innovations be considered uh, responsible innovations, and uh, particularly with the help of uh, local entrepreneurship. That's also why we have responsible entrepreneurship in the title of the project. How did you get Philips to cooperate? Um, bit of a serendipity. Um, we traveled in uh, Kenya, me and my colleague from Leiden, Andre Lelefeld. And uh, we uh, figured out that Philips opened an eye up in Nairobi, and we happened to be there, and we, we walked in, or we made an appointment with the director of that, and we, he invited us. And he gave us the right contacts here in Eindhoven to uh, continue with. Because that's important, you need to know the right people. Because right. if you're talking to the, the wrong guy in the right company, you might as well be talking to the, uh, to the guy of the coffee shop around the corner, it won't get you anywhere. You need to know the right people. How do you get to know Who's the right person within the organization? Uh, well, in, in my in this particular case, it was from uh, say uh, hearsay. The, the, the guys. Well, we, well, what we basically did, I think, we uh, we talked with uh, the people 
in, uh, in Eindhoven at Philips who were uh, very enthusiastic. They are very creative people. They are in a particular unit who are also developing all kinds of creative innovations. And they were very interesting about our ideas. That doesn't mean that you have the money right away. That takes a while. And, uh, when, but when they are uh, interested, then that, that's the first step. And then the second step is you should be able to get up into the organization with their help and to get uh, the funds. Which of you has been working on the basis like this, as a scientist working together with uh, people from a company or the other way around from a company working with scientists on a university or other kind of research center? Is, who has any experience in that? Just a few, it's, it's not really, and who would, who would be looking for anything like that? Who would say, well, that would help me out, but I just haven't found the way or it hasn't worked out yet? Well, it's... It's That's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I, I'm very surprised because I think your, uh, your customers are uh, the companies that you don't seem to be interested in. Um, if you want to do... Uh, um, you want to do MVI, you have to work on the interface between science and, and, and the real world out there. And uh, operationally, it's companies that operate out there. So uh, I'm very surprised that you don't seem to be interested. There's an old jazz standard that says, why should we, you be looking at the outside, standing on the outside, looking at the inside, when you could be looking at the outside, standing on the inside? That, that is a big question. Um, it's important, it's also what the government asks of, of scientists. Get out there, uh, work together with other partners. Don't rely on university money, don't rely just on public money, you, you have to do it. But there seems to be a problem. Do you have any experience about that, that it it's, might be a cultural difference, that there might be some mistrust or some, well, difficulty in getting to know each other? Um. I, I guess there is, otherwise we wouldn't have this uh, situation. Um, but 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 to go one step back, it's not just about money. It's not just that that companies can cough up money that can help you with your research. I think companies have problems that uh, can be solved by your input. Um, we uh, companies set targets for themselves. We. Um, uh, Unilever have made um, sustainability a core component of their business model. Um, that is one step, but to actually make that work, they need the work that you do. Um, Shell, I, mean, I work for Shell. Um, um, uh, sustainability, um, uh, social responsibility is, 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 is a key part of their uh, license to operate. To get that working, they need they need the substance of what is happening in the work that we are discussing in this conference. So what you're saying is you're not just asking for something, you're also offering something. But if you're offering something, then part one should be that you should know what the problem of the organization that you're going to work with is. Now, if it's there in their mission statement, sustainability is our core business, then you know what they're looking for. But how do you know what a company wants? Well, I, I think uh, the, the, the place to go is where the conflicts are. I mean, if, 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 you, if you have, if you have, have negative feelings about a company, you have to ask yourself, why is that? And then you're, then you're on to the solution. That, that is what you, what you and that company need to work on to, to make things better. Now, and then to, to come to the, to the example of, of the project that Case mentioned, um, um, then it is not a matter of trying to get money and work on it together. Then you have to step forward and tell the company, this is your problem, and maybe you don't even know it, and I'm going to help you solve it. I mean, that's what you're here for. So a clash of interest is a uh, source of innovation. That is a clash of interest yeah. 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 Is, is a great source of innovation. Um, yeah, one question, please. There's a microphone coming your way. Um, Johanna Höfken, Eindhoven University of Technology. I just wanted to sort of add another player because I'm getting a bit, I don't know, angry because we have heard Shell, we have heard Unilever, we've heard Philips, but I think there's a whole 
company, like a, or like a whole uh, uh, world of uh, small and medium enterprises, um, companies which have not the big, ma uh, like sort of the, these big names, but they also have much mo much less time and much more resources to say, you know, to to, to receive you, to uh, um, you know, to 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 actually say, yeah, okay, I also have time to work with researchers because we take time. Also, I heard that, and. Um, I think sort of one of the problems we have to address here also in this um, when when we are as you know in academia are asked to work with companies, I think it's important to also take take on board the smaller ones and not only the big ones because the big ones also have a more agenda setting power and i i mean i'm I'm a bit it's just sad that you know re representatives of big companies are you know, you know, sitting there, but no smaller ones. And I think, for example, in my in my or in our com uh, um, um, energy project, um, we're working we're working with you know very 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 small uh, small partners. And I think they are also there. And I think there we can really make it happen. What we all aim for to sort of you know bridge these gaps between academia and uh, and, and industry. And I just wanted to put that in because I it's, think it's, it's a very important. good point. You have smaller companies, middle-sized companies. You have startups. Uh, it also depends on what kind of research you're doing, of course, who you need to be talking to. Because if you need a lot of money, you won't be getting it from a startup usually. Uh, Case from Beers, please. Yes, maybe a short reaction to what you're saying. Uh, yes, I agree. I think small and medium sized companies are definitely very important. Uh, for example, in uh, the project, what I'm going to lead, there are also two medium-sized companies in it that are in the water sector. And what we learned is that they were very enthusiastic when they heard that a big player, as Philips, was also do, uh, uh, joining the team. So that, that was important for them also to, to come on board. But for them, it, it, uh, it is important that we figure out a couple of, thing, of, 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 uh, 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 of their problems. Just just for one instant, let's go back to the big company before we get to the, the, the other ones as well, because we need to solve one problem. You said work your way in, then work your way up. How do you get up in the organization? You have your friend inside the building. He's convinced that the problem of the organization is what you're going to solve. But how do you move on up within the organization? How do you get the CEO to talk to you? Well, it depends on what you're after. I mean, if you're if you have a counterpart in the company and you you decide you want to get the company put, to put money into into your research, then uh, when you talk large companies, just, yeah, um, then then basically uh, you can work your way up. And and generally, if you make it beyond twenty five thousand uh, euro, you're doing extremely well. Because the way companies are structured is that for a long time in the vertical line, nobody has any authority, so nobody can sign for anything. And by the time you come to the level where people have authority to sign, you can't reach them. So, so small amounts, yes, you can work your way up. If you want to go big money, you have to go top down. And there, it is not. I, I, it, it's not. You, don't, you do not a priori need to know the person, although you need to reach the person. Um, and I think there are two things that you need to, to, to reach somebody at the top and to really get them to pay attention. One is you need to show that you have a structure, that you have a plan, that you want to do something structured with these guys. You know, not sort of I have a subject and I want to study it and I want money for a year. No, you want you want to talk about your problem and we are going to work on this and it's going to take more years and it's going to be structured and we're going to measure results. That is what people in up high up in companies sort of pay attention to. And the second thing is that indeed ask for substantial amounts of money. I mean, you know, show that you're important and ask big. Don't and be modest. Don't be modest. I mean, show that you're important. And so that's how you work your way top down. So bottom up, yes, you can make it to some money. Top down, you have to have a real plan that appeals to people and you have to go show some substance because otherwise people won't switch on. Richie, you, um, before we go to the question, you, you wanted to say something. No, but you can also. Okay. First. Um, <laughs> right at the back. It's not really a question, but something which I wanted to, uh, to add. Um, the one way of getting entry in a, in a firm is also to, to show that you uh, know what you're talking about. 
And uh, since these projects are aimed at kind of multidisciplinary research, it may be good to go with people from different disciplines already to the uh, to the firm, because then you're, there's simply a higher chance that there's some somewhere a link between you and the one who's uh, allowed to sign, and that you get your money. So I think that's also something uh, a tip. <laughs> Thanks. And there was another question uh, here. I'm Rob Le Brink, Wageningen University. Um, hearing these you know, stories about working together with the big companies, uh, I miss w one aspect, which I think is an issue also for researchers. That's the fact, um, how does it you know, deal with integrity? And I'm not saying that if you work together with a large company, that, you're, that you cannot be an independent researcher or that, you, yeah, that you're not integer. But why would you risk um, being maybe accused by a peer scientist or yeah, take the risk that other people can question your independence? As apparently it's not that much used working together with the big companies. So you can question to what extent is it really necessary to work with the big companies? So if you look at the cost benefit, it might be logical that it's not that much done at the moment. Well. Richie, please. Yes, well, both uh, interventions just um, came a little bit uh, in the direction of the question I would like, or the point I would like to make. We are talking perhaps a bit too much about companies, the company perspective only. There is also the academic uh, perspective, and there is the small companies, and there is the, there are the, the big companies, there are NGOs as well. And there are other research organizations, there is the government, so there are quite some stakeholders. But let's focus on, are we focusing on projects or programs? Because I heard you talking about programs, large amount of money is a program. Uh, we also talk about projects, which is a smaller amount of, uh, of money. And for a project, it is... Uh, Jose, don't look so amazed. <laughs> but for a, a project, what, what it is, uh, it is um, normally uh, things that uh, are going a little bit more bottom up, perhaps, uh, which I would l very much uh, like to, to favor, to have attention for the emerging items, uh, then it's quite usual that researchers from academia and the research, uh, people from research organizations in, the, in companies or people from NGOs, they share their enthusiasm and their conviction for a certain idea. But in order to be a little bit strategic and a little bit, uh, well, hoping that you get somewhere with your RD, you should first try to take some distance from your own enthusiasm and see um, where could it fit in what for wh whom could this be useful and then um, do well a dual trajectory one is your research and one is the uh, well the more strategic um, is it useful for for a company or for an NGO uh, what's in it for them what's in it for me can we find each other so it's another way of doing what Case was just uh, telling, but perhaps on a little bit smaller scale, because this can be about smaller project uh, as well. And um, well, I hate mistrust. When you have to want to work with people, trust, building trust is a very important thing. So I would never think that I would no longer be in, in uh, um, integ integer person, my, my integrity is my personal thing and not depending on with whom I'm working. So um, these are reactions more or less on the question, but I think universities should coach their researchers, should coach students in working this strategic way, because normally oh, this is uh, universities uh, want to um, educate researchers, their, uh, researchers, their own fo uh, follow-up, which is, well, 
20% of uh, all the students, 80% goes to all different societal positions. So I think that should be taken very, very serious. And being able in strategic, more strategic thinking should be in the curricula of university. Okay, um, I'll get to your question later, but, but I think we have about 10 more minutes here. And, and what I would really like for, is to, for everybody to go home feeling inspired rather than, um, well, uh, amused or anything. So, so it's, you know, because everybody here is working on projects and, and uh, programs, but everybody needs to go home and feel a certain energy and, and certain ideas of, okay, um, you know, this helps me out. I can get further with what I really want. So um, we can't talk about each of the programs and we can't give specific advice to everybody like, okay, your program, you should talk to this person. He can help you on this or you can put it in the market through him or you can have more data through him or whatever because that will be too specific. But in general, to give some energy, some inspirational energy. You started out because you said, I'm surprised no one here is working together with the private sector. Can you, can you just give the people a bit of um, inspiration? Yeah, I, I would like to go back to the remark made, uh, sort of why, why would I do that and, and, and put my integrity at risk. I, I think I, I, I would I would advise you to to uh, to get a lot more relaxed about that. I mean, the 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 it's a weird perception that that across the gap from us to the private sector, there are a load of crooks sitting there uh, waiting to rip you off. I mean, these people have problems and these people are as concerned about their integrity as you are. So I think the first step in A, enriching the work you're doing, and B, getting more resources available is to be open-minded towards it in a critical way you know don't 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 be naive but but i would say go there and 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 and, and see what it can do for you because you I, I, and yes watch your integrity don't be naive but i don't see it as your biggest problem Okay, and when you do that, I think you will learn that these people in, in the private sector, they are really interested in, 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 in uh, uh, broader projects and only projects that leading directly to, to a profit. And they are also very well informed about a lot of things because they do not only talk to you, but also to other academic people. Integrity. I'm only saying that if you work with another company, people, other people, other independent researchers, they might question your integrity. And I'm wondering why, as a researcher, you would risk the fact that other people might question your integrity. I'm not saying that you cannot work uh, in, or that you lose your integrity if you work together with the company, but you face the risk that other people might yes. question it. I Gossip. Think, I, think, I, think, I think you should have the courage to, uh, the courage to, to, to stand up to that challenge. Come on, I mean, if you, if you, if you are, if you, if you are an, 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 a solid researcher and you are, you have done an honest to God job, and people challenge you and say you are, you are accused, then you should have the courage and fight it. Yeah, I mean, I, I may, it may sound naive, but I, I think there is a point at which you should be uh, counted. Mr. Stemerding. Yeah, well, j just to comment, because I, I feel a bit uh, disconnected with uh, the discussion now. Um, um, in the last round of the uh, MVI program, I think 25 projects has been funded of people who are collaborating with uh, a variety of firms, and many of them are here. I think your question perhaps was not really understood well because it was first of all a question who has experience? Well, some of the people who are here have not much experience, but they are really looking forward to work in a project in which we will collaborate. Just with getting started. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so I would like to invite everybody to go to the poster session and you will hear a lot about it. So in that sense, there is no no problem or fear or whatever f uh, t t that that we have to overcome here, I think. Okay, thank you. Please. 
Well, just have an end of. I I hesitated to uh, put my hand on uh, about cooperating with uh, 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 private business because I never did a project together with them. But uh, for instance, in uh, 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 in Rotterdam, there was an economic development board, Rotterdam, in which we cooperated with a lot of companies, the universities, the, uh, the, the, the education universities, and uh, all, all, uh, so that's also a way of co cooperating. And I remember discussing with Unilever the, the issue of uh, uh, sustainability. I was also cooperating in another uh, network with Jeroen van der Veer from Shell. So, well, is that cooperating with a company? Well, it's cooperating with people who have ideas within a company. And my personal projects have been either uh, not paid for, for instance, my a, a project in Rotterdam on whether a train could safely drive under the, the uh, river uh, when there was, for instance, chloride in it. No, well, a company, AXO, has picked this up uh, after a number of years. So there are ways of cooperating, which is not having a project or a program in which money is uh, driving from one to the other. And also, uh, I have been discussing about patents with uh, people when I was a, the president of Erasmus University about whether the medical center uh, could have uh, patents and how they could work with it. So there was where people from that had their own company who gave advice on how to do with patents. So I think there are different ways of working with companies of different sorts that, uh, so not everything fits to each uh, person. Indeed, if you are in STW, uh, I was once asked, asked to be in the board of STW, I know that there is one of the starting points that there should be the perspective of co cooperating with company. But I also believe in people who think that their result will be useful for companies or for other parties in, the, uh, in society. Well, thank you very much. Um, one last question for the Mr. Right behind you with, uh, okay, two <laughs> questions. <laughs> two remarks. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was wondering, um, sometimes interests are not really aligned, I think, with uh, uh, what researchers perhaps want to do and what uh, companies, large companies want to do. Um, for example, like uh, uh, goals of a company might not be as ambitious as uh, uh, what a researcher is trying to do. And um, so there is a clash of interest. And I was wondering, how can we overcome that once uh, uh, a large company has already claimed, uh, for example, that um, certain goals are uh, different in comparison with uh, societal expectations or political expectations? Anyone? Anyone here? Anyone? <coughs> anywhere else? Well, it here it goes a bit back to, to what we said earlier. I think if there is such a such a clash, um, you're onto something. I, I think then you then you need to uh, you need to really sort out bet between between the, the the researcher and the company where where it goes wrong. And and um, indeed, it may be that that you're not going to work together, but at least um, at least you you have the sort of contact that uh, that Jose is referring to, and and that that uh, that you uh, that from which you can uh, draw value. It, I'm not saying that it should always end up in a sort of happy marriage going on for for years. And, and it, it, what what I'm saying is that it is an, an, an uh, that that you need to get the dynamics into that relationship and. and Either you then conclude that you have to work together to make it, to, to bring it further, yeah, or you don't get together and you you just uh, each go your own way. It's, 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 there's nothing wrong with that. There was a question from the Mr. There. Uh, maybe a comment that was already addressed by I think Mr. Stemendink. Uh, you asked the question: Do you work together with companies? Well, that was a bit of a non uh, question because we all do. Uh, it, it's obligatory within this program. Uh, that was maybe why you didn't get any response. So, so okay. make, make that straight. We all do. We have been doing that for many years. Uh, but what uh, Mr. Fromschel is saying is very interesting. 
because he says up to a certain level, and that goes pretty high in the organization, people do not have the authority to uh, sign for a budget. That has uh, strong consequences for a program like MVI, in which you have to have cooperation of companies, also the bigger ones. Uh, but I think it, the same problem holds also for small and medium enterprises is to get relatively small amounts of funding that you need for these kinds of programs. So to end positively, as the chairman wants, I have a proposal. So we go approach now from top down. So um, Mr. Linz can go to the CEO of Shell and say, we well, got this small little problem. It's a relatively small budget. But let's sign a Shell and Unilever and a couple of other guys together. And we fund the MVI program with relatively big money. So we get rid of all this small nitty gritty asking for 25,000 for in the MVI program. Add some rules. Of course, you have to have cooperation. You have to have real cooperation with the companies. But the money is settled. So if we end in this way, I will be very happy and we can go to dinner. <laughs> OK, thanks. Well, thank you. Uh, tomorrow we, there'll be a whole day of uh, new interviews and lectures and uh, everything. For now, thank you very much. <laughs>